So before getting started, just a few words of caution. Whatever I talk about here, it's not contractual information, etc., etc. And I would add that uh, Reef is not production ready. So some parts I'm going to show are more stable than others, but don't use it in production. It's not ready yet, but please, please try. We're really eager to get some user feedback. So that, be that being said, let's start. Wha what is Reef, basically? So Reef, as its core and uh, historically, is a function as a service that runs on Kubernetes. Then, sure, what's a function? So here are three valid examples of what a function can be for Reef. In the first case, you've got a plain uh, old uh, Java function when you've got an integer division. On the other hand, you've got a bash function in that case, which reacts to standard input and then compute something on the standard output. And on the, the last part is a Node.js function, which is another language that, that we support currently. So that's what a function can be and what's it's that something you can deploy. So how do you create one? So Reef comes with a CLI and the way you use it, so you say I want to create a function, I want to give it a name. Then you have to tell where the sources are so we can build it. So it can be remote, a Git repository in that case. It can be local, as I will show in the demo. Then in some cases, if it's not a Node.js project, like if there is no package JSON, of, or if it's not a Spring Boot app, for instance, but just a plain class like I showed in the previous slide, you will have to tell exactly what file you want to, to extract the function from. And then you can uh, specify or not uh, what the image it's going to be published to. So basically, we take a function, we take the sources, we build it, and produce an image to be deployed. And what happens under the hood? Uh, so we just don't build it. So how do we support all these languages? How do, how do we build several several kinds of uh, languages and runtimes? That's all thanks to a project called Buildpacks, so Cloud Native Buildpacks, which is an initiative led by Heroku and Pivotal. And more specifically, we recently switched to Kpack, which is a Kubernetes implementation of the Cloud Native build packs. And that way, so your image is it built in a smart way. I will show it very brief briefly. But basically, it will cut your image in several layers so that whenever there is, let's say, a vulner vulnerability at the OS level, then the update will only update this layer and you won't have to re-download everything. So it really tries to minimize updates, make sure you've got a consistent base image for every of your image within your organization, et cetera, et cetera. So let's, let's see that. Hopefully it will work. So because of the short time and because I'm always clumsy, I, I cheated a little. I automated the demo. Hopefully it's going to work. So I'm using a specific cluster, but don't care about that. So as you can see in this example here, I'm using a local project. I didn't use the Git repo flag that I used before. And then the build packs will kick in, basically. And it is there are several steps, like detect what kind of technology it is. Is it Java? Is it Node? Is it something else? And then it will detect that. In that case, it's a bash function. So that's the bash function I showed at the first slide that do uppercase. And then it's ready because there is caching involved, because I didn't want to download in front of everyone and get everyone full asleep. So if we check with the Reef function list, I can see where what what I have currently, oops, if I can type. So you can see I have this uh, this image, this function ready with the image it's been published to, the artifact. And then I can actually try to dig in. So I'm using Dive, which is a great little CLI tool to inspect any kind of uh, Docker image or probably OCI image as well, I'm not sure. So I'm not going to dive into uh, all the layers, but just to show that uh, in our case, so there are a bunch of layers for the OS and, and the dependencies, etc. But if I switch, opa, if I can switch, if my laptop doesn't freeze, yay, demo, demo effect. Okay. So if I switch here and I minimize all the crap, you can see that it's really tried to get a smart way of, you see, that's my function, basically. It's one layer. So if you update your function, you're not going to need to download all the other megabytes. You ju you're just going to have that updated. And as I said, if there, is there you need to update the OS because of vulnerability, then it will impact the one layer in particular, not everything. You won't have to re-download everything. 
So with build packs, so here it's build packs in action, you will get a consistent base image for every of the image you build in your organization, which is kind of important because you won't have to deal with uh, with different OS, different vulnerability channel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then you also get you know efficient updates whenever you need to. So so far we we've got a function, but what is it? It's just an image. So now we need to deploy it somewhere, and for that you have uh, at the moment three options. Maybe more will be there will be more maybe in the future. Reef Core, K Native, and Reef Streaming. So Reef Core is very minimal runtime at the moment. What it does for you, so it takes the image you produced with the function you built, and will just create a service and a deployment. So if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, a deployment could create pods, basically stand up your container and have it uh, deployed somewhere, and a service will configure how you expose it in or uh, outside of the cluster. So let's see that. So with the CLI, you just say, I want to create, a, so in that case, it's a core runtime, so it's Reef core as a prefix. I want to create a deployer, then you give it a name, then you give it the function ref. So remember, when I gave a name to my function, that's the name I reuse here. Then I can tail the logs if I want. And because it's a demo, I'm just going to cheat a little bit. I uh, have not, so by default, the service that is created is internal to the cluster, and I'm running it uh, on a Google container engine. So I'm just using port forward to open a local port as if I had deployed the function locally. But that's not the, that's just a little shortcut for the demo. So let's quit this, hopefully, yes. So here what I'm gonna do, so I already built my function previously. I'm gonna create the deployer as I promised. Wait until it's ready. And then it will create uh, as I said, a deployment and a service. Hopefully, yes. So if we check with the CLI first, so my deployer is ready. If I check with kube control, which is a CLI for Kubernetes, if I get any deployment or services in, in the default namespace, that's the case. You see, I've, I've got one deployment and I've got one service. I mean, Kubernetes is the basic one, but I've got one service for my deployer. And now if I, so if I split, whoop, ah, I already split a lot. But if I use port forward, sorry, I'm just too lazy to type, but ah, hopefully I can scroll or not. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this with the right name. So sorry about that. So I don't remember the deployment name, but let's let's look again. So deployment is this one. So I'm just gonna forward it locally. So I just then I can just uh, and it's service of course, not deployment. Yeah. So see, it's cluster IP. That means it's internal only. So normally I cannot I cannot access it directly. So if I do that doesn't work for some reason. Maybe I need to do this. Yeah, better. If I don't say what kind of thing I want to forward, it's not going to work. And then, because I opened a local port that will actually forward my request to the cluster, then if I do a simple curl locally, because I use the local port, and I then it what's gonna happen, it's gonna route my request to the cluster, invoke the function, get the results back. My function was a shell function that uppercase the content. So hopefully we should see hello vox days all in uppercase in shell. And that's the case. Hoo, the demo worked. So that's the first, that's a very basic runtime again, just a deployer and a service. But that's enough to get, you know, get started with Kubernetes and get your function deployed somewhere. So now let's uh, see a little bit about Knative. So Knative is a Google project which includes much, much more than what we've seen so far. Like it comes with patterns, like common patterns when using uh, Kubernetes, like you know blue-green deployment and these kind of things, r different kind of routing strategies. So much more than the than the core runtime. And one important aspect, of of course, of Knative, and when we talk about function as a service, is the auto scaling. 
So we, we've heard about auto-scaling before, especially in the platform as a service world. When there is mo much more traffic out of a sudden, what's going to happen? You're going to get more instances uh, loaded up. So is here it's the same. The big idea, the big difference is the scaling to zero and from zero. So when your function, when there is no traffic going to your function after a while, it's going to be scaled to zero and supposedly not cost you anything and can get back from zero if the traffic comes again. So that's one of the big uh, differentiator in the function as a service world. But that being said, it al also presents some technical challenges, like startup start time becomes very important because if you scale to zero and then you have to scale from, from zero to something bigger, like one, two, three instances, then it has, it has to start fast because the startup ti start time accounts for the latency time in your request. You don't want to wait for the function to wake up for two minutes before being able to, to reply to the request that woke the, the instance up. So what's gonna, so if you're familiar with Knative, what uh, our reconciliation controllers will do for you is uh, when you create a deployer to create a Knative configuration and a route, so the route will serve uh, your request to the right, uh, to the right pod. So it's very similar to the command we've seen just before. In this time it's not Rift core but Rift K Knative because it's another runtime, but the logic is the same. You give a name to the deployer you want to create, you give a function, and then the way you curl is a bit different because um, in that case, I'm not using a service directly. I'm using a Knative service and Knative is using Istio. So I need to talk to the in Istio gateway that will route then to the, right, uh, to the right pod. So I need to give a little more information. So the way you target uh, the Istio gateway depends on your Kubernetes distribution. So if it's Minikube, for instance, you don't have the load, ser load balancer service type. So the way you, you query it is a bit different. So I invite you to, to check the docs for that for your use case. And you need an extra header, which is the host one. So we can locate which pod you actually want to query. But the rest, the rest of the curl is, uh, is very similar. So let's check this out. So as you can see, it's still the same command. Instead of Rift core, it's Rift K native. I give the function name, function I built earlier. Then we can see again with the CLI if the, if the deployer is created. It is. I can reach, reach out here. I can actually make sure. So you will see in that case, it's a bit more complicating, uh, a bit more complicated. I have more things. So I still have one deployment, but in terms of service, there are many more things in, 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 uh, in play. In that case, I scripted a little bit to get the IP of the Istio gateway, which is this one, and to get the right name for the, de for the deployment. And if I do this, it's uh, still the same function. So I should get the same result, hopefully. It's still my shell function that I created before and still no YAML so far. So that's quite a revolution. And it still gets me the uppercase result. So the demo still works. So, and now let's talk about a new runtime we've been working on and I've been working on with my colleague in Paris, the Rift streaming runtime. So our ambition, so when I said that some parts are more stable than others, <laughs> we're coming to the part that is not so stable because yeah, we've, re we've not released it yet. By the way, everything I'm showing right now is not released yet. We have the docs online already, but it's not released. So it's not production ready and it's not released. I want to say that again to make sure no nobody tries it in production. So Rift Streaming, it's a new one. So we're really, our ambition is to bring a stateful, stateful streaming to, uh, to our Rift platform. So what is what happened here? So so far we've seen simple functions, right? You have one input computes one output. In that case, we can go even further. We have multi-input, multi-output, and in that case, we will map the input, the the data that comes to the input from Kafka topics, and then it will compute data to output fluxes in the Java in the Java world, and then it will land on some uh, on some other topic. So I'm saying Kafka. I'm taking a shortcut here. Kafka is the only broker we support so far, but we will support more technologies uh, soon. So the scaling also is a bit different because so far I've shown HTTP, basically I've shown curl, right? It's uh, one request, one reply. So the scaling, you count requests. The more requests you have, uh, the different, then you will have to stand up more instances. In case of streaming, you have possible infinite streaming. So you cannot just count requests, right? That doesn't work like that. 
So in that case, what we've chose to work with uh, is called KEDA. KEDA is a Red Hat and Microsoft initiative or, uh, originally, and we started contributing to it. So the way it computes uh, how, how we need to scale up or scale down is based on the input lag. So the more delay you have processing the inputs, the more we'll try to stand up instances so you can catch up and uh, hopefully uh, get on time again. There is, uh, at this time, very early, it's been like, what, two weeks old maybe, there is a small uh, gateway, so you can curl easily and, you know, get your data in, and then g get data to, to one or several inputs so that the whole streaming pipeline can, uh, can run. Yeah, and I'm not going to dive into too much, much more details. So now it's a bit different. In that case, you need to create streams, so Rift streaming for as a prefix because it's a streaming runtime. You create streams. So in that case, my function has one input, one output. So I create stream in advance. I'm saying it's provisioned by Kafka. So this is a technical detail that hopefully will go away uh, before we release. But so far, that's what you need to do. You need to also tell what kind of contents you accept in this topic. And then, the, so the most interesting command is the last one. So we're not talking about deployer like before, but about processor. So we, we create a streaming processor. You give it a name give it a function, give it the number of inputs and outputs, which are named streams in our case. And then Riff will do the magic for you. And, you know, I've shown, uh, I've shown basic request reply function, but we support in that runtime uh, actually more complicated function, as I said. So you have two implementation of the same algorithm, so to say, one in Node.js, one in Java. So in the, on the Java side, we're using uh, the Reactor project. So the Flux type and tuple2 type you see here is from the Reactor API. So what is it doing? Um, basically, it's applying, uh, it's zipping together a word of a stream of words, a stream of integers, and then it repeats the words the number of times it's been specified by in the other flux. And it's doing the same thing in JS. So whatever your preferred language is, just read the version you want. So basically, if I send one and I send hello, I will get in the output topic, I will get hello. If I send three and uh, vox days, I will get vox days, vox days, vox days in the, uh, in the output. So let's see if it works. That's the tricky part. That's the most unstable part. That's in but so in that case, uh, the most observant in the crowd may, uh, may have seen I'm switching uh, cluster because for a technical reason at this point, we cannot deploy both the Knative and the streaming runtime. Hopefully we will have it fixed before uh, we release. And I don't know why it's taking so long. Interesting. So it's supposed to, so in that case, I, um, deploying another function. I'm actually deploying the function I've shown in that slide. So the Node.js function here, that gets two inputs. So the input for the numbers, input for the words, and one output, which is the repeated words. So as many words as we specify. And actually I can show what it's trying to do. So the most important part here, uh, if I try to zoom, hopefully I will, I will manage. Do you know how to zoom in Sublime text? I have no idea. Ooh, not cool. Let's try again, and if it doesn't work, I will just... Uh, wow, okay, that worked 20 minutes ago. Doesn't work anymore, okay. I don't know who is squatting the Wi-Fi, but that's, that's life. So what it, what it was supposed to do what? It was supposed to create... So I'm trying to zoom a little bit, so at least you can see what I was supposed to do. Uh, how do I zoom here? Oh my God, I have no idea how to zoom. Anyway, I will tell it like that. So I was I was about to create two streams for the input, one for the numbers, one for the letters. So one is in JSON, one is in text plane, and then I have uh, an output stream for JSON. So in the background, what it's doing, it's uh, creating uh, two topics, I mean, three topics in total on Kafka for you. And then I create a processor that will say, hey, I've deployed this uh, repeater function, so please use it. Uh, I have two outputs, numbers and letters, and please compute the result in the output stream. 
and then I was cheating a little bit. I'm using uh, so we for actually mapping inputs. I mean mapping data from and to topics. We're using a project called Liklus, L-I-I-K-L-U-S, and we're using the Liklus client to post data to streams and to read it and to spy data as well. So I was about to open two clients, one for sending integers, one for sending words, and the third one to observe the output. I am going to try a last time, who knows? Okay, I think it's not going to work. Nice, it worked 30 minutes ago, but hey. Yeah, too bad. Oh! Nice. I knew I should be persistent. And when it doesn't work, you just have to retry, right? That's the definition of insanity or something. That's what I heard at least. So here I'm creating the function repeater. So the function is the w same one as in the slides. It's this one. So getting two outputs, posting to one output stream. So here again, it's using build packs, you know, to build the image, make sure the layers are sensible. So whenever there is an update, it's uh, minimized. Yeah, maybe it doesn't really work though. It's very, very slow. And hopefully, yeah, w I will come back to it later. We'll see. We'll see if it, if it works or not. I have what, three minutes left, so maybe, maybe enough time. So I guess, I'm not sure it's easy to read, especially for, for people in the back, but in summary, I mean, it's a bit of a simplistic summary because we also support request reply in the case of streaming, but if you want to do uh, querying like in a fire and forget style, send the streaming runtime is for you because you send an event, then it, it will react on to depending on what you define in your, in your pipeline. If you're more looking for the you know, traditional HTTP 1 or 1.1 1 .1 uh, style, which is request reply, then the next question is, does latency matter? Is latency very important to your use case? If so, you probably want to avoid the auto scaling because then you've got startup issues that are not completely solved in Knative yet. So if latency matters, fix the call runtime, which is minimalistic, and then you can add your own stuff. If latency doesn't really matter, and you need auto-scaling, pick Knative. If latency doesn't matter, you don't need auto-scaling, you can pick the core runtime anyway. So, so far, I've talked only about functions, but there are actually more than that. There are two more abstractions I have not talked about. So, function, you know, you, you have just have your layer on top, and then the rest is uh, done for you, the OS, the dependencies, etc. Uh, application, you can see actually the end result. So the function plus its invoker. So the invoker is the thing we bring for you. So some runnable application, Spring Boot application or what have you. Then, then you build it uh, with Riff, and you get an application abstraction. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got containers. So basically, it's a... Uh, can be whatever, it's just, it just any image. So of course, if you do that, you have more responsibility toward you know, security, etc., and maintenance. But you can also do, do that. So the only difference, in instead of Reef function create, you will have Reef application creator and Reef container create. And then how does it relate to runtimes? So it's the same comments as before. So streaming supports only function at this point. Maybe we'll have more support later. But if you use core or Knative, instead of function ref, you just say application ref. And then you can deploy your application or your container, whatever it is inside of it. And so I started by saying that Reef is a function as a service. It's actually a bit more than that. It's a serverless platform that works on-premise, so you can install it in your infrastructure and, uh, and get started with function and application deployments. So let's, I have 10 seconds to check whether, whoa, that's super slow. So <laughs> Okay, it's still building the function. So we'll see. I have four seconds left. Let's try to be wary of people time. So I have, I've talked without uh, diving into much details, but if you're interested in learning more, I suggest you take a photo of this slide. That's probably the most important one if you want to continue to learn about Reef. 
Our Slack is public, so we welcome you and welcome your feedback. Please try it out, read the docs, uh, any docs improvement, try the samples. So for installation, it's quite easy. Use a CLI, you just do brew install or choco install if you're on Windows, or you get the binary, you can install Reef on your Kubernetes with Helm. And then you can read more about the, the runtimes we support and the different, uh, the different pieces that I have not talked today. You can check that in details. And I think that's it for me. And if you have any questions, I'm here till the end of the day, so feel free to uh, intercept me at some point. And thanks a lot. That's the building. I mean, we still have... Okay, I'm gonna try to, to steal one more minute, maybe. And we'll see if we go through. And if you have questions, maybe I, I, can, I can answer some. Why while it's building. Oh, no. Okay. Maybe it actually maybe so I already had it. Let's see. So I have okay. Then I need So I need to produce numbers. I need to produce, I'm going to try to get it running, we'll see. I need to produce letters and I need to observe outputs. And before that, I just need a little trick here. So people don't want to see the demo, I'm so sad. Okay, so we'll see if I send three and hello Vox days, what's gonna happen? Hopefully we will see. So the nice warning with the Java modules. It's a bit slow, but we should see hello Vox days three times. And if not, well, that's life. Let's try again, four times, even more. Yay, I mean four times and I see only three, but okay, that's a bug I will need to investigate, but that kinda worked. Okay, thank you, thanks for your patience.